the day where we commemorate the Holocaust and the death of six million Jews, along with about four million others, gypsies in particular, and all of the, uh, the unacceptables of society that were killed simply because they were either unacceptable to an elite society or because they were Jews. And uh, the, the, the full name of today's remembrance is Yom Hazikaron, the Shoah in Hebrew, which means Holocaust and Harism remember, Remembrance Day. So the actual remembrance doesn't just commemorate the death of the Jewish people during the years of, of, of Nazi tyranny, but also remembers the heroes. And I think that's very appropriate that it's not just a day of mourning, but it's also a day of honor. Now, today is a very, very unique and important uh, Yom HaShoah, because today marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the Holocaust. Now, Yom HaShoah was established in 1953 by David Ben-Gurion, who was the first Prime Minister of Israel. And the formation of the State of Israel, you need to understand, uh, came with a slogan. When Israel was formed in 1948, the declaration is, this will never happen again. And so the founding of the State of Israel was based on providing a place for Jewish people to live where they could live in safety. Now, in reality, that hasn't totally come to pass. The uh, people of Israel have never experienced complete and total peace in that land. But the idea is that throughout history, the Jewish people have wandered. Throughout history, the Jewish people have been persecuted. And there needs to be a Jewish land, a Jewish homeland, where Jewish people will take responsibility for protecting each other and never allowing such a thing to happen again. I'm sure you've all heard that slogan, never again. So why did it happen? It happened, of course, because there was a precondition, preconditioning to anti-Semitism throughout the world. Uh, so Hitler was tolerated. He became the lightning rod for something that already existed. So because you are a Jew, you can't live among us as Jews. And then because you are a Jew, you can't even live among us, so they're banished. And then finally in the Holocaust, because you are a Jew, you cannot live. You simply can't live. Okay, so there's a, there's a progression of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, and I've talked about this many times, is very logical when you understand there is a Satan, a literal enemy of God who hates the people of God, who hates the word of God, who hates everything about God, and is doing everything possible to discredit the word of God and destroy God's plan. Guess what? The Jewish people are part of God's plan. And that's why they're so attacked. So the root of anti-Semitism is Satan himself. Okay? What is our responsibility to stop it? We need to pray. Love the fact that Psalm 22, verse 6 was mentioned this morning. Romans 10, 1, where Paul tells us that his heart's desire and prayer modeling for the church is for Israel that they might be saved. Paul is giving us a, a, a teaching on what we should be praying for. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Therefore, you do the same if you, as you follow me. Okay, we understand that the spirit of Islam, of radical Islam is a new carrier of Nazi ideology and plan working on the earth today. So anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. It's important that we understand that. And then finally, it's important that we understand that the solution, the solution, everybody say the solution. Yes. The solution for the whole dilemma is the gospel. It's the gospel. And we believe that. We believe that we, we're not just a, an alternative plan, that we have something that people may want to consider, but we're driven by the conviction that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe to the Jew first. So God's peace plan 
God's plan for the eradication of anti-Semitism is the gospel. On this somber day of remembrance, we also remember the goodness of God that brought about righteous people who were willing to lay down their lives. May that message permeate our culture, and may we be known individually and corporately as those that righteously stood with Israel, willing to lay down our lives for Israel and the nations.